Hi, I'm Jake Fear from TM Sales. I'm here today with Triangle Tube to talk about inspecting the burner on a Triangle Tube PA series boiler. As always, we want to begin by turning the power to the boiler off, making sure our gas is shut off as well. Once we've done that, we can start by removing the snorkel from the blower. With our gas shut off, we'll use an adjustable wrench and we can loosen, just loosen lightly the nut on the gas valve. We need to remove our wiring from the gas valve and two plugs from the blower motor itself, one high and one low. Once those are out, you'll need a 10 millimeter nut driver or socket. We will loosen the retaining bolt on the locking clamp. Once that's loose, support the blower from the bottom. Remove the locking bolt by hand. Take that out, set it off to the side. We can now undo the union on the gas valve and remove the blower unit. We're going to set the blower off to the side. Once the blower is removed, we will now use a T25 Torx bit to remove the igniter from the top of the unit. There are two bolts. Loosen them and remove by hand. The back one can be a bit of a bugger sometimes. You can't see it very well. Once you get that out, as we are slowly doing, You can remove the igniter, just pulls out. That igniter will sit off to the side. It can hang by its wire. Put your two igniter bolts away. Once the igniter is out of the way, we'll now remove the top plate from the heat exchanger. This is again a 10 millimeter. You can use a nut driver or a, or a ratchet socket. There are five nuts to be removed. These should only be hand tight. These do not need to be torqued down very tight. So you can loosen them. Once they're loose, remove them by hand. Again, you don't want to lose these. We'll set these off to the side. Three. Four. And the fifth guy in the back corner. Once the fifth is removed, you set those off to the side. The burner is now ready to be removed. The rubber gasket does create a bit of suction, so you will need to use a flathead screwdriver to break this suction. Ideally, we would pop it right below the connection for the fan. Doesn't take a lot of force once that's popped loose. You can now lift the unit up as an assembly. Make sure that the gasket and insulation block are attached. Bring it out. Once we have removed the burner plate, we can now inspect the burner for any debris or damage. This is a pretty brand new burner, so it does look good. You would see some pitting or corrosion on the mesh, or if you see gaps in the mesh, it would be time to replace the burner. If you need to replace the burner, remove your one-piece insulation, and you will remove six nuts that are holding the burner in place. Remove the burner, remove the gasket, replace a new gasket and burner, torque those back down. Again, these do not have to be super tight. Tighten them down finger tight, give them another quarter turn. Once you've done that, the insulation block can be replaced. Make sure that you align the igniter and the sight glass with the holes in the gasket. This can now be replaced the same way it came out. Tilt it in over the top. Make sure you have your gasket and plate aligned. Set your plate back on.
We'll now replace the nuts on the head studs. These do not need to be over tightened. These are measured in inch pounds. Take this finger tight, take your nut driver, give it another quarter turn, and you're good to go. Replace the other four nuts, reassemble your gas train the way it came off, and you're good to go to fire the boiler. Hope we answered any questions you had. For more in-depth information, please visit us at triangletube.com.